everybody. Welcome to the Locker Room. This is Southland's podcast for men, where we read demons' conversations, talk about the right things in the right ways. And we put a pin in our time uh, last week with Nate Head called Raising Boys. And so we're going to pick back up in part two. And uh, part here, two. Here is Nate and I. So, hey, Nate, we, uh, we, we it's just. It's been a great week, man, by the way. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. Still a hot room. But that's Rim's okay. Still hot. We're Same to shirt that, on too. To work that out. That's right. Um, man, you're just giving it all away. So in this, I thought this was pretty interesting. I think sometimes it's really about how we listen and how we ask good questions. Mm-hmm. And talk about the importance of what you what you guys do and you and Stephanie do with raising boys. I know that sometimes with girls and also with boys, what happens if we're not careful, we'll ask just lay up questions and they go, Yeah. Yes or no. Or okay. It's like, and so you got to get creative and you got to stay consistent. And eventually what will happen is, is they just know it's coming and they're already loaded to then communicate with you about their day or about their week or about something that's up or something that's down. But yeah. talk a little bit about just the power of asking good questions and maybe some of the questions that you guys, you guys ask your kids, your boys. Yeah. I think some of the daily ones are, you know, how was your day? Yeah. How was school? And trying to give them some space to process, yeah. and you know, it's like fine, good, all yeah. right. Well, hey, best part of your day? Yes, exactly. Yeah. It was the best part of your day. Yeah. Hey, anything get on your nerves, yeah. or what's your what class is going well for you right now? Yeah. Just trying to get them to start to talk, and you just find some you know conversational threads that way. Yeah. Um, one thing that this isn't like out of the gate question, mm-hmm. but when I know there's some space or maybe some uh, questions have led up to it, and we've had good conversation, um, I've you know asked like, hey if you could change one thing about our family, what would you change? That's you good. know, and it's yeah. like, get rid of my little brother, you know, no, <laughs> but, but like, you know, just to get them sure. to think critically yeah. about the fi- family right. dynamics. And there's times where I've tried to ask them questions about me, like yeah. a little bit of an audit, like, Hey, what's, you know, is there something I need to change? Yeah. You know, something that, um, that, it gets on your nerves or bothers yeah. you. And, and, uh, so I, I've done that, especially with Jordan, who's a little older, yeah. you know, can think a little bit more critically that way. Yeah. Uh, but even, you know, when they're younger, they can kind of, yeah. they can answer that. And so sometimes you can recognize like, Oh yeah, they, they have picked up on the fact that, you know, I've just been stressed out lately or I've been, you know, whatever. And, and yeah. you can talk them through that or you just kind of tuck it away to yeah. course correct or reflect and even if there's something that you notice when they're in the car and they didn't really want to talk about it you can even just kind of put in your pocket and come back go hey man i just i just noticed that you were you were pretty quiet everything okay there you you didn't you didn't really want to address it so i I wanted to kind of you're kind of almost saying hey i I just wanted to give you space to think about and i also wanted to spare maybe your dignity but i just hey what's going on there i mean that's and then the second the last part of what you just said is huge for us as dads um i started doing this with my my now 21 year old, uh, back in the day when she was little, I'd ask this question, Hey, how can I be a better daddy? Yep. And they, they, sometimes they know. Yep. Hey dad, you're too loud. Yep. Hey, you raise your voice. Uh, hey, you've said the same thing three times. Uh, hey, there's this triangle that happens in your forehead when you get mad. <laughs> um, there are times where they, you know, they got, they all of a sudden they go, well, since you're asking, I got a list. Yep. And then, and then here's what we do. We, we chew what's, we, it's a piece of chicken. We chew the chew out the good things and then we spit the rest out. Yeah. We don't take it personally. But when we say that, <laughs> we're saying, Hey, I, I'm not a perfect dad. And man, I love you with everything that I am. And God, the father loves you infinitely more than me. But man, I want I want to reflect him and I want to be the best dad that I can be. And so if there are things that you see and just receive those things and own those things um, that you need to, and, Go, hey, I appreciate that. I'm going to work on that. Because what happens is we're always making, we, when we're picking at our kids or we're challenging them, we're trying to get them to course correct, it's like we're, it's like we're taking withdrawals over and over again. Yep. And so when, you, when we're able to, hey, this is, a, this is a two-way street here because we're a family and this is a relationship, and this really matters. And so that's why these questions are really, really critical. And I'm so glad that you... You brought that. In. Anything else about that before we move? Well, I, you, we had you know talked about one beforehand. That's there. It's you know uh, how can I pray for you? And yeah. I don't ask yeah. that question yeah. enough. So I was glad to see that one on the yeah. list as we were you know yeah. ham and egg a little bit because I think that's a good genuine question to yeah. ask them. You know how can I pray for you? What can I be praying for? It forces um, them to think. Yep. Because they go, I, I don't know. Yeah. What well, you got going on today? Yep. Oh, I got you know I got a big test today or. I got trials for this or, 
yep. whatever. And you go, oh yeah, well, let's let's pray about that. Yep. I'll be praying for you about that. Yep. You know? Yeah, and I, I've watched you know Jordan uh, sports, and there's times you know he may struggle with something, you know. Baseball hitting the baseball is the hardest thing in the world to do, and yeah, you get a he's slump, done it pretty eff- well. He's done it pretty head. effortlessly, and yeah. then the summer he just had some stretches where he just wouldn't hit the ball, and yeah. you just watch your kids suffer, and yeah. it's like, all right, I don't want to this to be the only thing yeah. I ever ask him about, yeah. But I also want to make sure he knows, like, I care, yeah, and I right. want to listen, and yeah. I want to be an encouragement, yeah. you know. So, I think you have to think creatively about how do you ask a similar question in a different way at different times so that they don't just go on autopilot and kind of rinse and repeat, you know, wrote answers. You're really trying to draw out of them what's going on in there and then try to be a source of encouragement. So when they get stuck or there's a fear or there's a worry about something, we may talk about it one day and then we come back, I may come back the next day and go, Hey, listen real quick. How are we going to approach this today? Yep. And so I, we've, we've had a conversation about it. We've given some clarity. They've shared some clarity. All right, what's their plan of attack for the for them today? Because they're, tr- I'm trying to get them to own their faith and their actions yeah. and to live intentionally yeah. and to um, to move toward things that are hard to move toward things. Even though I've never done this before, it's okay. This is what faith is. Yep. Um, I've done that. Like when we're when I'm trying to prepare them for hard things. Yep. Hey, if you go into own something to your teacher yeah. that you know you need to own yeah what if they come back at you with this yeah. or you know just try yeah. to play a little bit of like or even with their friends like hey you know you need to go make that right yeah. and so the conversation could go a couple different ways are you ready for that yeah. and just do that thought exercise to yeah. you know help them get ready so that's in the category of asking questions yeah. but that's back to some of the you know situational leadership You're getting them to think yeah. pre-think you know instead yeah. of all of a sudden they're in a the spot yeah. where this they could go really well yeah it could go really poorly. It could go somewhere in between. Yeah. So be ready yeah. to respond. Yeah. And we do that like with uh, Jordan had a teacher that he just didn't they just, with. just yeah. didn't yeah. job with last year. And he usually gets on with most of the teachers pretty well. Sure. And so we had to try to coach him to go, hey, she's got X number of students. And just so y'all know, middle school kids are hard yeah. to deal with. So <laughs> let's give her some grace. Yeah, now, man. what you've said to us sure. about her is frustrating. Yeah. Sure. It's legit. I, I get, get it. it. Yeah. But that's not how you're going to get right. to a place of peace and joy and survive the rest of the year. She's going to throw sure. you out, brother. You know, so yeah. just walking through that intentionally to go, if you go to her and, and say, hey, I've done this wrong and can you help me? And right. she goes, no, man. Well, you can't just blow up and throw up your hands and quit. Yeah. How can you respond? Yeah. If she goes, yeah, thank you and yeah. leans into it, how are you going to respond and what do you do? Yeah. So, Gotcha. That's good. Our culture is constantly trying to shift the definition of what a man is. And this question, I, I know it matters to you because you're going, hey, these kids are on loan to us. Um, you got years with them. You got, you got, we got six, you know, more years maybe um, with some, which is overwhelming. Mm. Nickel just talked about that this weekend. You know, he got, yeah. got emotional, but I was in service twice and he got me, he got me, <laughs> he I text cut him. me good, man. He's like, brother, you got me in tears twice, I know. man. And I knew it was coming the second time. No. So what are, what are the ways that you're trying to model for them just what a godly man looks like? And and some of it's through what you what you do, and some of it is even probably through your dad and and then some of the men around you. Like I, I try to point out things with my girls about these women that these characteristics and things mm-hmm. like that. But what are what are some things that you're trying to do for them to model what is it here's what it looks like to be a godly man. Just yeah. a couple of those things. Yeah, one of those is how I interact with their mom, you know, with Steph. Yeah. And I you know, I, we're not like overly affectionate physically, sure. but I try to be physically affectionate with her. Yeah. I want them to see what it looks like for a man to properly pursue, yeah. pursue a woman, yeah. engage her. And you know, some, you know how it is. You start, right. you know, kiss in the yeah. kitchen and uh, Lincoln's like, uh, yeah, then, you yeah. know, then it really ham it up. But, yeah. but I really, I, I want yeah. them to see me treat her well. Yeah. And do I raise my voice? Do I yeah. get angry with her? Am I sarcastic you know, with her? Yeah, yeah, am I sarcastic? Do I roll my eyes? And, you yeah. know, we love to play and have banter, but sure. I always try to keep it respectful yeah. and good. never try to do things to undercut the respect that I have for her and for all women. Um, and so that's... Because that's, because here's what will happen. If you do it, Oh yeah, they're going to do it. Yeah, They think that they can just do what you do. Yep. And that's yeah. not... 
It's not cool. Yeah, exactly. So I've tried to really be physically affectionate, highly respectful of her, yeah. um, model good listening, yeah. catch myself when I'm starting to get frustrated and not just vent, yeah. and, you know. And there's times we have to just, you know, yeah. find some time to ourselves and, you know, <laughs> We've been married a long Take time. A walk. Yeah. Hey, let's go talk, and yeah. uh, we'll 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 resolve that later. Yeah. Um, but you know, and and behind her back, you know, it can be: um, Are you rolling your eyes behind your wife's back? Yeah. Are you doing things that just kind of undercut her authority in the home and yeah. what you've tried to do? And so, just be mindful of that. Um, I think too, just processing with them cognitively the hard emotional things that happen. Yeah. We talked a little bit about anger, um, you know, last time, but. I've had to do work on that in my own life. Totally. Um, you Me know, too. I, I think I told you when we were talking at one point, um, I heard Gary Black recommend the anger workbook to somebody one time. Yeah. It was just in a counseling session he was referring to. And I was like, so, so what was the, what was the name of that? <laughs> I'm, ask, again? I'm asking for a friend. Asking for a friend. <laughs> bought it. I've been through it. I think three times. I think now. I need it. It's so good it. because yeah. what, what that resource did for me, it's comprehensive and there's components of anger that you don't even realize are tied to yeah. like forms of anger, right. like some passive aggressive sarcasm. And right. I'm like, I don't know, sarcasm has anything to do with anger. Right. It's right. a way you deal deflect with. Deflect. Yeah, sure. deflect. Exactly. Yeah. So that resource has been super helpful. So back to the question of how do I try to model manhood? I try to help them understand there's times where I get angry. Sure. But, and I try to help them understand this is a time of conviction and in my anger, yeah. it's not sin. Right. I'm standing up for what's right. And so when I see mm -hmm. someone operate in a way yeah. that is um, wrong, yeah. I'm going to control my anger, but I'm going to be clear yeah. about what I'm standing for. I'm going to move toward and stand. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to stand and I'm not going to be violent. I'm not yeah. going to be crazy. Right. But I'm going to stand for that. And then there's times where I go, man, I just... I'm sorry I yelled at you, but bud, I just, yeah. man, I fell yeah. off the handle and I got angry and, and I that's need you to forgive too. me. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's too. another way. And, and then the cognitive side of it, and we talked about it last time again, is helping them unpack, mm -hmm. hey, you, you blew up and you got really mad, mm -hmm. but let's back up. Like what has, and sometimes it's like, brother, you've been out late and up early the last three nights and you need to go sleep. Yeah. And you can't go to a friend's house tonight. Here's how we because, got here. Yeah, right, this is right. how we got here. Yeah. Or, you know, like you've just been burning the candle at both ends, yeah. you know, or sometimes it's like, dude, you can't take out on your brother or your mother mm -hmm. what happened to you at school today. Yeah. And we do that. You know, it's yeah. like we get home from a stressful day and all of a sudden, you know, it's like people are walking on eggshells because they know we're just, yeah. we're just still caught right. up in the emotions of that. So right. that's uh, another part of manhood that I think really matters. Yes. And that's something that I've tried to do a lot of work on. Do not bat a thousand. Right. But I've improved on and tried to kind of hand oh, off to them. Sounds like it, man. That's awesome. That's really, really good. Um, I, just the, just for a second, this is a side note because there, every once in a while there are staff from other churches that that listen to this, and so we obviously work for Southland. Our kids, our pastors' kids, uh, just the term pastors' kids, you know, that can mean a lot of things. You know, um, it can mean they're killing it, they're doing awesome, or so they're son of a preacher. That's no right. Can ever reach me. That's right. Or they're sweet just, talking son of a preacher man. Yeah. Or they're just buck wild. And so how how have you and Stephanie really tried to help your boys have the appropriate and the right relationship with the church because it's where we work, you know? Um, how have you helped them go, man? This is this is God's bride. This is the body. This is why we need the weekends. This is why we need community. As you're thinking about just some of that. Yeah. Well, we have a a family friendly culture yeah. and we you know we've talked about that and we we're just blessed from the eldership to john yeah. scott they just reinforce the value of family yeah. so i never feel him i never felt embarrassed when my kids didn't act the way yeah they're supposed to right, right? right. because yeah. there's just a ton of grace for the fact that man they're right. kids and they can't just act you know the way they always should now sure. they're good yeah. they're well behaved right. but i've never felt the pressure to like keep them in line yeah. so to speak right um, and for them to love the church, you know, just, just trying to in, encouraging that. So yes. That it, you know, you part know. of that is when I'm home, I just shut this place off. Yeah. Like I do yeah. my very best. It doesn't always work perfectly, but, yeah. and then, you know, I'm there when they have yeah. events going on, theater, sports, games. Yeah. Um, there's times where we've sure. got stuff that happens in ministry, but we've just been modeled. We have a healthy culture of valuing family. So yeah. I think some of that's indirect and they've caught that, but they know like, I mean, unless something 
you know, it's significance big. going on, like be, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to be there and I'm going to try to build my schedule around as much as I possibly can sure. that, you know, this summer Jordan was playing up in Indianapolis and I was here yeah. on Sunday hosting and they were in some Sunday tournament games. And when I got done, right. you know, everything wrapped up at church, I just got in the car and started heading that way. Yeah. Well, the only game I would have caught would have been the championship game. And oh, I got wow. in the car and they were losing and Steph's like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. and I said, well, I don't know if they're going to win or not, but okay. if they win, I'm going to be there. Yeah, right. And so they ended up losing. I turned around in uh, northern Kentucky, <laughs> locked my keys in my truck. Oh, when I was turning around to drive really? back home. Yeah, fortunately, there was a very friendly sheriff that That's came nice. by and Slim Jim me out. But um, nice. yeah, I've just tried to fight for that time with them, knowing, yeah, yeah I love what I do. I'm passionate about the church. Yeah but I'm not going to sacrifice my family on the yeah. altar of ministry. Yeah. Yeah. So I've tried to make it fun for him, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and Jordan is an example. He plays sports and sometimes yeah. he's away on Sunday sure. and I've just allowed him that freedom in the context of some things that are non-negotiables, sure. you know? And so sure. if his character was going, you know, stray or he was, yeah, we cut some, we cut the things that we want to do out. Yeah. We cut, start we cutting back some of it out, but he's need. just been high character yeah. and he's got a love for the Lord. Uh, yeah. It's evident. And we've kind of processed that, you know, and that's, that's standpoint. him being on mission a little yep. bit too. Yeah. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. That's been missional for our family. I think it's, I think just going, Hey man, this is a messy place and God, but it's for all of us, yep. you know, and it's a big place. I even have to tell kids that when they're little, Hey, listen, everybody here, uh, is people we care about. Uh, they're not always all say people, but that's yep. okay. Um, um, every decision for baptism or every, whatever we see these stories, we just, we get to impact a lot of people. And it's so cool to get to be a part of a place that impacts a lot of people for the kingdom. And people are going to be in heaven because of what we do, because of what God does through our church. And so trying to just point toward the good side of that, because there's always oh, yeah. stories. And, and again, we can always bring in teachable moments. Hey, you wouldn't believe, it. I can't tell you the story, but listen, this is what happened. So we can use those teachable yeah. moments, but if you lean too heavily with some of those things, then they go, gosh, it just feels like there's a bunch of chaos and crazy in the middle of all of that the whole time. Is there, is there anybody fun doing this? Yeah. You know? So yeah. anyway, but I think that's important. Um, student ministries. Um, mm -hmm. again, and you know, you said George's playing baseball, but you got two kids. I've got one that's now in sixth grade yeah. and one in fifth grade that's in children's, but, um, you know, talk about how important student ministries has become for you as parents having, you know, an additional other people speaking to their, not that it, not that you don't have that anyway through your friendships and staff people, friendships, all of those things. But why, why has that been important for us? It's crucial, man. Um, I mean, we did student ministry, so it gets, I know that absolutely. there's a bias, but yeah, there's just something about another adult, even a young adult, yeah. especially young adult sometimes yeah. reinforcing from their vantage point, yeah. what faith looks like in real life. The truth is. And yeah. so, you know, we've been spoiled. We've just been blessed to have great youth leaders yeah. in our boys' lives. Jordan's been through it a few more years now, and we try to cultivate that relationship with them. We've kind of had preexisting with their youth leaders in the past, yeah. meaning knowing them before they were even their youth leader. Right. But we've just tried to thank them, encourage them because that voice matters. Man. They just, after a while, it's like, well, of course that's what dad They've says. They've heard you. They've heard They've our heard sermon, yeah. you yeah. know, for yeah. 14 years, however long that is. But when somebody else, <laughs> yeah, it's funny, we laugh, you know, I talk with, you know, baseball parents and it's like, you take your kid to a swing instructor, you know, somebody's going to yeah. teach them how to hit and they're just, telling them the things you've told them, but they stopped listening <laughs> and to you. you're writing them a check. <laughs> but when you write a check and somebody else says it. You and know, it works. Exactly. And why wouldn't it work spiritually? And why would we want that in, yeah. in our kids' yeah. lives? Yeah, no, it's, it's huge. Try to pray for those. And our, that's our how they're going to, they, they, to make their faith their own. Yeah. And our teams do such a great job of putting it on a shelf that yeah. they can receive. Yeah. And you've been there. You stand in the back of the room at Student sure. Ministries, and yeah. I, I'm just in tears. It's like, dude, that's the church right there. The next generation, arms raised, yeah. and and just in worship, and and it's it's an amazing thing. So, they um, get to they get to discover God yep. through community and through His Word on a shelf that's contextual for them. They get opportunities to serve in places. It's the it's the funnest thing to get to see our kids love student ministry. I just think that's really really important. I I want to take it back to a personal question. Um, you guys. We, you've you've shared with me even offline this just about how significant prayer has been for your boys, but for you and Stephanie as you pray for your kids, you know there's a book that Beth Moore has. It's called Praying God's Word, mm -hmm. and that that was a that was a that book was really kind of clarifying for me to go, man, I can just pray scripture, mm. man. That's so simple when it's you know whatever the verse is, 
I can just pray that scripture into my life or over people. And so are there some couple verses or a verse for your kids that you guys have used um, that you have either just prayed over them or you've given them anything that sticks out or yeah. comes to mind for you? Yeah, I think, um, you know, for Jordan, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. And that's one. for Jordan. That's, yeah, that's kind of been woven into his story a little yeah. bit. Steph's reinforced that a ton. Yeah. Um, and then I think that's just been pretty relevant, you know, to his life um, and some of the, the circumstances uh, that we've walked through with him. And yeah. then Lincoln, um, you know, is just Second Timothy 1, 7, which yeah. is, you know, for the Spirit of God does not give us, um, sorry, for the Spirit God gave us, it's afternoon again. It's the so. afternoon. Yeah, we both have tired eyes, honestly. <laughs> I can feel it. Hungry eyes, tired eyes. <laughs> Nice. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, gives us power, a love and self discipline. Yeah. And so that's been one for him that's just been, you know, beneficial. Pushing um, past and fear. Important. Yeah. To push past yeah. fear and trust God yeah. and not be fearful um, and take ownership and belief. And so those have been good. From a prayer standpoint, I have um, in my phone in notes, I just have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, th- you know. And I just have every day yeah. things I'm praying for. And so there I pray for myself, for Stephanie, the most, the person I know that needs prayer the most in the yeah. entire world is me. So yeah. I start with me. Yeah. Her John Piper described that once. And yeah. He was like, he started off, he's like, I just pray for the person I know that's struggling, that needs the most. And he's like, and that person is me. <laughs> and he's got like the voice of God. And he he's does. preaching so powerful. I'm like, he well, does. dude, if that guy needs prayer for himself. So I can use I it. I start, it's like, Lord, yeah. you know, yeah. and, but then I pray for Stephanie every day and I pray for my boys every day. And I've yeah. just, each day it has a different, approach that I'll take in prayer. It's just kind of specific things that you yeah. kind of mapped up for yeah. yourself. Yeah, some you know, one example one day is like I want to pray for their future spouse yep. and I want to pray for their purity. I love for that. their personal purity. So it's like God help them guard purity, yep. help them value it, yep. help them receive grace, you know, when right. they don't go there. You know, so give me another example of another day. Uh one of the day, uh, uh like a a passion for God's word. Yeah. That's one of the days things I pray for is just going, God, I want them to love your yeah. word and to seek it. Yeah. Not because it's answers for a test. Right. It's because it's life. Like yeah. it's a lamp into our feet. It's a light into our path. Yeah. It's the way to freedom. Yeah. It's the way to, to real true life. So I just, I pray that, you That's know, cool. and there's prayers when stuff pops up and you're just having yeah. a conversation with the Lord. Yeah. It's like, God, I know he's got that test yeah. today sure. and man be with him or, Lincoln's walking into an audition or Jordan's trying out for a team. And it's like, hard Lord, conversation, whatever yeah, it is. Sure, yeah, sure. They're, they're, they're walking through. They've got a friend that I'm yeah. not sure how that relationship's going yeah. and just praying for that situation. So there's always situational, but I just, I've tried to be disciplined and methodical, just laying a foundation. You know, I told you and my dad passed away 10 years ago. The thing I, the thing I grieved the most was the loss of a prayer warrior in my life. Yeah. You know, he would call me on Sundays. He preached little country church and he'd probably 30 minute drive out there. And he'd just call me. He knew it'd go to voicemail cause I'm here, sure. you know, doing stuff. And he would just say, Hey, here's what I'm praying for you I and love your that, boys man. and your family. So when he passed away, I was like, well, I've lost my dad and that's yeah. something to grieve, but I've lost a prayer warrior. And so yeah. I want to be that for my boys. Yeah. I want to lay a bedrock foundation that in the heavenly realms, I'm advocating before my father in heaven on their behalf. I think that's a huge deal for dads to go. And you just start thinking about the things that it changes your your heart. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it softens your heart, you know? Yeah. Sorry. No, man. I mean, I I didn't grow up with that. And so just listening to you talk about your dad, I I always get so jealous of John when he talks about his dad, you know, and so he's a special man. Yeah. And you, you sharing that about your dad, it's just like, man, I need to be more prayerful for my kids. And, and more methodical. And again, it's just thinking about some areas that, that are that are today and tomorrow and the next. But you know, when you, you We brush our teeth and we eat most mornings. So methodical. Just just yeah. add that somewhere yeah. where you can do it consistently. Put it in your notes, put it on a yeah. note card. Reminder and stick it in your reminder truck. pops up your phone at seven fifteen AM. Pray for my wife and kids and yeah. just whatever's gonna work. Just be yeah. practical with it. Simple man. I love that. Um I, I would love to challenge you men to begin doing that with your with your family. I would love for you to do that with your kids. And and maybe there's a passage of scripture that you will ask God to reveal or you'd start studying to go, Man, I love I think this verse really is something that either 
they identify with or, or I want for them. Or maybe there's a, you know, when you were mentioning Lincoln a little bit, because I've got one that kind of battles fear. That's a perfect verse. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, man. The only spirit that's in us gives us power and love and self-discipline. So we we can chase it. We can stand and we can move toward it because he's He's there. He's inside of us. And so I would I would love to challenge them in listening to think about the age and stage of your kids, one, to be praying for them, and just begin to think methodically about what does that look like. And, man, the easiest way you can do that, whether it's putting your phone or a piece of paper or somewhere where you can see it, and then thinking about what are the scriptures that I need to be praying over my kids. And you know what? You're welcome to bless your kids by just by showing them that. I think I think kids are encouraged when they go, man, my, my parent loves me, man. And, and even if it's just a letter that you drop it in or a note or something you just put on their 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 you know, their, their, their bedroom, uh, dresser just to go, Hey, I just love you. I think when I, when I see this verse, I think about you. I just want you to know, God loves you. You know, yep. love um, there's a passage in Zeph- Zephaniah. <laughs> this is the first time I've touched Zephaniah since I've been in the, in the seat, but, uh, it's a great book, not, not hating it. Um, but I love this passage. It speaks about God, the father and his love relationship with us. And, I also think it's a verse that we as fathers can apply to how we love and like our kids. And so Zephaniah 317, and it says, the Lord, your God is with you. Uh, the mighty warrior who saves, he will take great delight in you in his love. He will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. Um, and there's a lot in that passage. I mean, there's a lot in that passage, but, um, I love the word delight and, to delight in something it, it, it you know we know that God loves us and the cool thing is that God enjoys us that he likes us and i i think we we just don't always think that yep. and and that verse just says the lord is with you the mighty warrior saves he will take great delight in you it's like wow he knows everything about me yep and he still goes no man we're good we're good my son i let you were worth the life of god's only son my son. And so, Hey, I love you and I'm for you. And, and I, I, I wonder for me, how do we as dads reflect that same type of delight in our kids? And so just by letting them know that we love them, I, I'll give you a quick example. And then I want you to think about you for your boys. Yeah. When my daughter Avery was getting ready to go to college, we were sitting on the couch and man, I was sad and I'm happy for her, uh, yep. you know? Um, but I remember looking at her and go, I'm just going to miss this. Just being on the couch, just yep. hanging out, talking, laughing. We'll watch something silly. We'll talk about whatever. I, I I miss that, you know. Friendship. Yeah, you know, and because I just love being around her, you know. Um, well, she's awesome. Yeah, yeah, she's she's something. But anyway, I don't mean to go down that road. But but for you, how do you, how do you show your kids their delight in? Yeah, them? well, that's you. You remember the old report cards? It was like <laughs> O was outstanding. Yeah. S was satisfactory. Yeah. N was needs improvement. <laughs> yeah. This is probably a needs improvement <laughs> category for me. Yeah. Um, I try, I do try to be an encourager. I really yeah. try. Yeah. I'm not as consistent as I need to be, yeah. um, in this area, but a lot of times I'm just trying to verbalize it because yeah. men, we don't do that well. Right. Um, and just go, Hey man, I love you, buddy. Yeah. And I'm proud of you. Yeah. You did the right thing. Or you did a good job or, um, some, you know, grades yeah. reports come home and yeah. it's like, Hey, I, kn- I know you've worked hard yeah. and I appreciate yeah. it. I see that. Yeah. Um, so I've tried to communicate that. Um, one of the ways I try to is to express a little bit of just physical affection. Yeah, my right. dad was that way. Um, yeah. And so that was a blessing to me. And Lincoln loves, you know, he loves to hug. Yeah. And, and so I, I, I do that. that. But try to do the same with Jordan. Try to give him a hug before we go to bed at night. Yeah. You know, just tell him I love him and I, I care for him. And then, and, you know, uh, it's easy um, in sports to see the wins and the losses. Right. So, you know, Jordan and I usually debrief the games on the way home, yeah. you know, in the car or something like that. And I try to yeah. point out things. Some of the stuff's on the field. It's like, hey, man, dude, you pitched great today. Yeah. And I saw you do this and this happened. Yeah. And then sometimes it's like, hey, man, when you when you struck out, you just ran off the field with your head held high like no I big deal. That. I'll get to yeah. the next at bat. Seeing all of that. Yes. You see him. Yeah. And, and I think it's like, hey, even in defeat or even in loss or even when it's not going your way. Yeah. There's some things that he does control, his actions, his attitude, his yep. focus, all those things. 
And I, I love that, man. Yeah. So just trying to point yeah. those out. And again, that's a needs improvement category for me. Yeah. Um, but that's something that I, I try to communicate um, consistently. But I, I, I get a needs improvement on that one. This is not about me tonight, today, but uh, you know I've got two girls and they're six nine months, six nine months apart. So we almost always do things together. Yeah. Well, we've just now separated where you know Evie's now in sixth grade and Emmy's still in fifth grade. So there's yep. times where I got to run Evie to church. Yep. Right. Or, or I've got Emmy with me, and now we have our own time. And We're so, in the taxi phase of life in the head household. <laughs> yeah. Straight up Uber, bro. Yeah, yeah. And so, and so sometimes it's taking a walk with them. Sometimes it's wrestling with them. The other, yeah. the other the other night, I noticed we spent a lot of time playing catch up with Evie because she missed a lot of school because of being sick. And so we, I, I know that we've it's kind of shifted that way toward her because she's got a lot of work. But I just I, I sat on the uh, I sat on the couch with Emmy and she just had she had the uh, uh, she had the switch in her hand. She was playing Zelda. Yep. And I'm just watching her and I'm just sitting there here. I'm going, Hey, is is that Zelda? No, that's uh, Link. Oh, okay. Are they married? And I'm just playing with her. Yep. You know, I'm like, oh, yeah. now she's got to carry this big block of ice from one place to the other. I'm like, you're never going to get there. It's just going gonna to melt. What if you get there and it's all the way? I'm just, play, I'm just playing silly. Yeah. I'm like, um, I wrestle with them still. Yeah. Um, you've got, you know. <laughs> Jordan will whoop my butt. Yeah, you've got. He, he's 6'165 pounds. I, I, he, I, every time I see him, it looks like he's grown three inches. But, but. There's something about just putting hands on them in a good yep. way. Yep. Um, just looking them in the eyes. I wrestle. Them. That's one thing for dads of boys wrestle. Yeah. Wrestle with them. It's one of the best things you can do. It also can help them get to sleep. But yes. but the best. Wear there's something out. about there's something about playing, man. Yeah. I mean, just there's so much affection in that. And I know it, it gets it goes away yeah. at some point. Got to but, go to the park the other day with with Lincoln and shoot some yeah. baskets and just talk smack, you know, yeah. and yeah, you yeah. know, yeah. I've got to beat him. I'm not going to let him I yeah. can't let him win. Yeah. There's something there's something too with boys, you know, it's like shooting ball or, th- or throwing baseball back yeah. and forth. There's conversation that sometimes yeah. guys got to have something in their hands. But if I had an after do with my dad again, I just want to play catch. Yeah. I yeah. mean, and I can start bawling, but yeah. that's it. Like there's yeah. something about that. Yeah you know, raising boys and not everybody's athletic. So it doesn't yeah. have to be athletics, but find that thing yeah. that they enjoy yeah. that you can build a bridge to enjoying yeah. too. And just, yeah. you know, like you said, like Lincoln loves to watch movies. I could kind of give or take movies, but yeah. there's like movie tavern, $5 Tuesday nights. Yeah. And when we're in the yeah. ability to do that, it's like, yeah. buddy, let's get some popcorn and go watch a movie. Yeah. Even if it's going, Hey, do you smell that? I smell ice cream, you know, <laughs> and we just roll it where you want to go. You know, it just, you just, they get to choose, man. Yeah. You know, we go to Freshies or we go to Sonic or yeah. wherever. It's just like, it just speaks about, you know, it's like, I just love hanging out with you. Or, yeah. you know, then we get an ice cream and I'm like, hey, you want, you want to try my, you know, just kind of smash it, you know, a little bit, just get it on the <laughs> forehead or whatever. I'm like, it's awesome. Yeah. You just, just build memories. You know, yeah. I think sometimes we're, I'm, I can be careful because I can be too cheap to want to buy something, but we're just build memories, you yeah. know, and I think that stuff, they will look back on those things in a, in a great way too. And, it it says that he takes great delight in us and i don't fully understand that um in his love he will no longer rebuke us he will rejoice over us with singing now, you know i'm not gonna probably sing over my kids i do like to worship with them every once in a while in the car and stuff but i turn the jam up really high so they don't <laughs> hear me but but I just, I don't know. There's something about God the Father that just delights in us. And of course, we have to discipline, but man, we should delight in them a whole lot too. Yep. A lot more than we discipline. Yep. And I think the reason we discipline is so that we can get back to a place of even delighting yeah. with them. I think that's that's super important. Yep. I heard this quote, and we're getting close to wrapping up, um, that says, the most important mark we leave on this world is the mark that we leave on our kids. And um, I love the heart of our church for families uh, it starts with our elders. It's a it's a very different place where we work, you know. Um, it's a blessing, big time. And for John and Scott and our staff, I'm grateful for the work life balance. We don't always take advantage of it the way that we should at times, so sometimes we'd be wise about that. But I'm grateful for a church that encourages and equips and strengthens not just our families but the family. And and locker room. I want to make sure that you're aware of this. Uh, there's some things that are easily available for you that you may not be taking advantage of. The first one is, is not out yet, but it's going to be out soon. Southland Parenting Podcast is coming out sometime in the beginning of 2024. Scott Nichols is going to be doing that. I know it will be limited, but, man, I think it will be really, really solid. I think you're going to be really, really encouraged by 
by it. But just be looking for it. I'll let you know as we get closer to it what that, when, that, when those launch dates will be. I'm also grateful for the groups model. And when I was getting ready for this, Nate, I, I just thought, you know, I, was, I just want to look and see what are some of the different groups that we have for families. And so, and these are five different campuses. And so this was just like, like a couple days ago. Uh, there are groups for moms. There are groups for dads. There are groups from single parents that are actually for men uh, as well. Families with middle school and high school students. How, I mean, those, those seven years are critical because those seven years set up the next four years. Those four years set up the next 40 years, you know. Uh, here's one called Moms of Little, Littles. Here's one called Praying Moms. Here's one called Game Night for Teams and Parents. I thought that's kind of cool, that's you awesome. know. Uh, parents with Young Families. Dad's lunch groups. Uh, here's a grandmother's praying for grandkids group. Listen, if you're looking for some community and some encouragement as a parent, uh, we'd love for you to go to southland.church slash groups and just look through the directory. And you know what? They're, they're, it may just be what you're looking for right there at your campus. If you need to, look, look at another campus and see. Or maybe God's put you in the spot that you go, that's a great idea, but they don't have that at this campus. Can I get connected to them and find out what they do and start something at my campus for the community around me? I think that's that's critical. So, hey, if your kids aren't a part of children's or student ministries, it would be good to help your kids and students get involved. And you can go to to look for children's. Southland.church slash children's. Yep. Or if you have a high school or middle school student, it is southland.church slash students. Man, what a collaboration right there. It's awesome. It, what, what you'll do is when you go there, you'll find out, hey, what we have for you, what we've got involved, uh, some helpful resources you'll be able to reach out to. If you need to, you can find out a little bit more about just children's staff. You can talk with them or your student ministry staff at your campus. Learn more about when they meet, what they offer, trips, retreats, how they can better serve your family. But we'd love for you to check that out. Man, you want somebody else in your corner that's that's trying to say the right things and supplement what it is that you're doing at home. And so uh, before we close, man, anything else that you think of that you just want to say to dads as we close today? I I know that I, it's funny when you said that you could have asked for five five other guys, but as soon as I thought about this for you, I went, man, I just watch your boys and I see you. You're, you're really intentional. You're really disciplined. And I love, I love the joy that comes out of your family. And I also – it was so confirming when I talked to Stephanie went that he's this is the right person for this and so but anything else you want to say as you as you close this up as anything that you want to encourage dads about yeah I would say um you know just a couple quick hit things be quick to apologize we've talked about that yeah. be more gentle than you think you need to be um yeah. and there's something about manhood sometimes that you feel like you just need to put them in their place yeah. or show them who's boss be super and, loud yeah and you know I just think being more gentle than you think you need to um, on the whole is probably a better way to go. Um, hold them accountable. So yeah. it doesn't mean that everything just flies and goes. You've right. got to hold them accountable. It's easier at times just to watch your kids get on a device or go play in the next sports league. Mm -hmm. And you just kind of let your hand off the parenting, you know, um, yeah. controls, but you got to hold them accountable. And then, um, I would just encourage men, especially if you deal with anger, to work yeah. on getting it under control. So yeah. the Holy Spirit, you got to take it to the Lord, take it to the Lord's people mm -hmm. um, in that. And so if it's some counseling, it's yeah. jumping into a group with some other men and just yeah. opening up your life to go, I have been yelling at my kids. Yeah. And it's not good. Yep. I need and your help. So help you, get help. Bring mm -hmm. some accountability there. Um, but beyond that, man, it's not too late. Yep. You know, it's not too late, even if your kids are older, to even go back adults. and... Yeah. own it and yeah. apologize and go i did not lay the foundation i needed to yeah. and so as far as part depends on me and the holy spirit i'm going to try to do better going forward yeah. and just start over again and yeah. so if you got little kids in the home one other quick thing yeah. is not every stage of parenting is like the favorite stage yeah you know yeah. diapers is one things and toddler years is another things and yeah I enjoy this stage right now pretty well, yeah. you know, kind of preteen, teen. Maybe that's because we did ministry in that age range yeah. some, but I've really enjoyed it um, probably more than when they were like two. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. they can do and stuff. I, yeah. I think it's okay to acknowledge that, especially for young dads yeah. out there. It's like, it doesn't mean you just take a pass and it's like, I'll see them when they're, you know, yeah. 12 or when they can play sports that I want to play with them. But don't feel guilty if yeah. you're like, man, this isn't the most fulfilling yeah. thing I've ever done. Right. It's okay. Right. Keep at it. Love your yeah. wife, love your spouse, and 
and uh, engage that way. But so those are a few things. You got to have other men in your life. And again, that's why men's groups are super important because you can't be the best dad that God's called you to be without other men pouring into you. And so that's super important, man. That's awesome. I really appreciate you coming on. Hey, listen, before we close, um, I reached out to your boys. Uh, while you were in Ireland, and asked them to share a little, just okay. a few brief things You're about make you. Me cry. I'm gonna crush you. On this. Ugly cry. Um, this is this was so fun. So, and it's they're you know they're they're boys. It was really simple. It's through, through through text messaging, but uh, I just asked him a couple questions about you. And so here's what Jordan said about you. Um, he said, "I love my dad. He's the best." Uh, here's some words to describe him: funny, understanding, outgoing fun-hearted deep thinker he said some of my favorite moments my dad with my dad are riding to baseball games with him in the mustang and then he put this laughing face emoji with tears coming out of his eyes about him about about his time with you um and then this is from lincoln this is always your curveball you're going where is this gonna go (laughs) um he said i love my dad so much here's some words that describe my dad it's funny how these are their words, you know, but, you know, Jordan said, funny, understanding, outgoing, fun hearted, deep thinker. Lincoln said, caring, loving, annoying sometimes, which is like, yeah, it's every dad. Funny. And then he said, eloquent. <laughs> <laughs> I love Lincoln uses some big words. Yeah. Uh, it's so. funny you you said this earlier because it, it made me smile when you said this. But he said one of my favorite memories about my dad, and again I'm trying to discern what it is that he he's written. But he says uh, he's going to take me to a movie, and the movie theater was closed for the day, and my dad rented it out, and no one else was there, and we got to have our own popcorn people, and we got to watch the movie in, in the theater all by myself. He said it was the best. It, it was, was so awesome. fun. Yeah, I think that's so cool, man. It, it's neat to. We're, we're we're to be a blessing for our kids. Um, we're not if we're waiting to get that from them. I just thought it would be fun just to kind of hear what your boys would say, and it just if anything confirms just who they are and what you guys are doing. So well, that was a gift, man. Thank I can't, you. yeah, I can't thank you enough, buddy. It's fun to get to do this with you, and dude, I I love getting to do this today. I know we did a two parter. It was in the afternoon. It was warm, but. Hey, this is gonna this is gonna bless. It's like dudes. the Jordan flu game right here, bro. <laughs> That's right. You That's, just dig deep and you, get after you, it. You got a little bit of some drainage stuff too from being in Ireland. So thanks for very wide boys. In. That's right. That's right. But dad's the stakes are super high and there's nothing more important than legacy investing and imparting something that lasts something that's eternal my prayers that god uses this podcast today to encourage our dads to invest in the boys and if you got girls figure out how to contextualize it i think you can figure it out let's wrap it up two words raising boys if this podcast has encouraged you i'd love to hear from you if you're wrestling with christianity would love to talk with you if you're interested in becoming a christ follower or just trying to figure out what is your next step uh man shoot us an email locker room at southland.church uh, we'd love to connect with you and see how we can help you. And as always, if this podcast has encouraged you share with a friend, can you imagine just the dads who could use this encouragement out of these two podcasts? Uh, that would be awesome. And men and dads get after it, go lead fight for the most important things. And we'll catch you next time on locker room.